So today we are going to set up a short delay or timed event system for, let's say this example, I have an invisible bridge here that will turn on when we press that and after five seconds it will automatically turn off so you only have a limited time to cross it. All right, so set up in my scene here, I have a bridge object which is just disabled by default and it's just another cube. Over here I have a prefab button that I've set up that we'll be using our scripts on. It's just a pile of cubes and then a big uh, trigger box collider over it for the interaction script. And this is the exact same thing because it's prefabbed. So let's set up our first uh, Udon behavior. So this will be uh, a so this will be a graph program. So here we're going to call this button timer. And we'll throw this onto our button. And we'll just hit override so it applies it to that one as well. Uh, open Udon graph and let's get started. Oh, I just hit uh, shift space to toggle full screen mode. Uh, it's really nice. It does open up the search menu though, but that's removed in the uh, next update. So we are going to need four variables to start out with. A game object variable, and this will be the object we toggle on and off. So we'll call this target, and we'll set this to public so we can use it in the inspector. We'll need a public float, if I, there we go, float variable, there we go. And this will be the max time for our timer. So we'll just call this timer. We'll set this to let's say five and have this set to public. So we can change this in the inspector as well. Uh, next we'll need a bool and this will be a private variable and this will be is active. Now we'll be using this uh, to determine whether or not the timer stuff should be running so that we aren't running unnecessary code when like we don't need to be using the timer uh, and lastly we'll need another float variable and this will be timer count now this will be used to actually iterate over the like uh, the internal count instead of just going for this number uh, so to start out with uh, we will have a interact event. Search interact and grab that. And we are going to start out by turning the bridge object off. So we'll get a game object set active. Drag that up here and plug it in. And we're going to get a get var so that we can get the game object tar target and since it's first it defaults there and we'll put that in instance and we'll set this to be on so we're turning the bridge on by default next we need a set variable so that we can set is active to be true grab this here plug it in now, since set variable is a generic node that can be used for most, if not all, no, uh, variable types, you have to input your own va uh, value for it. So we're going to get a bool constant, or a const bool, and this will just allow you to choose a value. So we're going to set this to be true and plug that into there. So let's go now to the update event. Now update runs every frame, so the less you can do in here, the better. So we're gonna start out by just getting a branch and a branch is again, just a true or false check. And we'll plug that in and we're going to see if is active is true. So grab another thing, is active, set it in there and then perfect. Now since we'll be iterating over a timer count and this will slowly be growing we want to know if it, it's equal to or greater than our timer which will tell us oh we should stop the timer now so since we're doing another uh, if then 
uh, we'll grab another branch, drag it from true into here, because it'll be if if is active is true, we'll go to this one, uh, and then we need to check if one float is bigger than another. So we'll do float greater than or equal. And we'll plug that in here. So we'll need to get uh, first variable it needs to be timer count. And we're checking if timer count is greater than or equal to timer. Now, if this is true, we need a game object. Actually, we can just grab these uh, because we will need to set the game object to be inactive because our timer is done. And we'll need to set is active to be false. One thing we also need to do here is we're going to set a, another variable. Uh, this time it will be timer count and since we've been iterating over that in our stuff we haven't done yet we need to set timer count to be zero uh, just resetting the value of it so we will need a const float and this will just allow us to get a zero that we can plug in here perfect now if the timer isn't done we'll be doing our timer which I'll set up here so we're going to start out by getting a set variable, a timer count. And if it isn't true, if it's false, we'll go into here. Uh, now we need to add the current value of timer count to something called time.delta time. Now, basically that's how much time has passed in the real world since the last frame has been rendered. It is basically a faultless way to detect how much time has passed and it's how we'll be adding information into our timer count variable so we need to add two floats together float addition there we go plug that in here as the result now we'll be adding timer count with time delta time There we go. Plug that in there. And there you have it. Uh, time Timer count will be added on with how much time has passed. It will be added into here. And if this number gets greater than 5, or whatever number you've set your timer to, it will go through this, and it will disable everything and set it back to where it was. Now, since I've been having some compiling issues today, I'm just going to Control D to duplicate this script, delete the old one, and then just get rid of the one at the end. And that should fix any kind of compiling issues uh, you might run into. Uh, that, that isn't a you wrote the script wrong issue. So I'll plug this in here. Now target automatically gets set to itself since we haven't put anything there. So right now if you were to click this, it would just turn the button off instead of doing anything which would be unfortunate so we're going to put bridge in there so that toggles our bridge object then we are going to apply that to the prefab come over to our other button and that also has bridge selected perfect so let's boot up VR chat and make sure that this works all right we're in game let's run up to our button it turns it on, and if we wait a little bit, there you go, it turns it off. If we quick run across to the other side, and it turns it off, let's press this button, and it does the same. Perfect. And that's the timer in the Udon graph. So let's close out and remake it in Udon Sharp so everyone has their versions set up create u sharp and i'll call this button timer sharp you don't have to call it sharp if you didn't do a graph version of this uh, this just creates a dot asset file which is the same thing as what these are 
and you, you just can't have them with the same name in the same folder. So I've just been putting underscore sharp at the end of anything uh, that I do both versions of. All right, so now that it's created it, we'll let it compile down here a little bit. There we go. Let's double click this to open it up. I have it in Visual Studio Code. So what we'll do now is we'll set up our variables like we did in the last one. So we'll need a private bool is active, a private float timer count, a public game object target, and a public float timer and we'll set timer to equal five now we won't need the start event in here so let's just scrap that we will however need uh, the interact event so private void interact now it's yellow underlined but that's just because we're overriding an event that already exists in VR chat and that's fine this is all that this is going to be all we want to do on the interact so it's fine to fully override it and when we interact with it we'll want to do target dot set set active to be true because we're turning the object on then we will set is active to be true as well and that will be it for the interact event. So let's go to our private void up update. And in here, we'll start off with a if is active, just to see if is active equals true. You don't have to put uh, equals true in here. Uh, you do have to put equals false if you're checking to see if it's false. Uh, but right now we're doing if is active is true we'll do this section of code and we'll do if timer count is greater than or equal to timer we'll first do target dot set active false because we're turning it off timer count equals zero and is active equals false. Now, if our timer isn't above the time event uh, value, we'll do an else, and then timer count plus equals oops, equals time dot delta time, and that will be the full script. So if we come back into here, we'll let our script compile a bit now that it's updated. Okay. Now we uh, select our first button over here. One of the nice things about Unity when you're uh, swapping scripts between each other, if they have variables that have the same name to them, you can simply just drag and drop it and the objects will autofill. See, this already has bridge in it because the last script that was on here already used a bridge. Just hit control S here. And I'm gonna leave this one over here to be the graph one, just so that this scene can have both the graph and the time, uh, the Udon Sharp version. And I'm gonna hit play because with Udon Sharp, if you have a trigger event, you can just hit this button over here that says trigger interact. And that allows you to uh, basically fake the button being pressed. All right, it turned it on and it turns it back off again. Perfect. So let's double check that everything works in game and this should be it. All right, back in game, let's run up and check it. Turns the bridge on and it turns it off. Perfect. All right, let's just run over and double check the other one and yep they both work perfect so that should be it for setting up a delayed event 
uh, or a just event timer of any sort. Uh, you can typically follow that uh, with almost any type of timed event thing you may want to do. Just that simple, uh, like adding a uh, time.delta time into whatever variable you're checking on. And this can be used for a lot of different things for time related events. Uh, but yeah, that should be it for this. Um, I don't typically do shilling or that kind of stuff, but right now I'm hoping to get a uh, Japanese subtitler for our videos. So uh, right now I have a Patreon goal of uh, $200 a month just so that we can support uh, both me and a second person to come in and do the subtitling. So uh, I hope you'll uh, look into that and I hope you've enjoyed. See you again.